Hi, welcome back to the guest list. I'm now joined by Anita from Vinca Design. Welcome, Anita. Welcome, thank you. Now, Vinca Design, you guys have been around for quite some time. Tell me about the history of Vinca Design. It started with my mother, Vinca, and when she saw the bridal market when she got married, she basically couldn't believe how there wasn't really any motivation, any, any innovation, shall we say. Uh, there was patterns, there were dressmakers, um, there wasn't really anything professionally done. And as a designer, you know, for herself and in a small way for others, she bought a little shop with a dressmaker and, um, and then decided to, you know, to start bridal design and, and special occasion. And she started in Hamilton, then grew into Auckland, and then my father got into uh, publishing bridal magazines before anyone ever thought of it in the early 60s and it just went from there. They started importing fabrics and because there wasn't any and you had to have an import license of these beautiful laces and embroideries from all over the world and then they sold up and down the country to bridal fabric shops and so and then they had a pattern making service so they were so so forward and so directionally focused to helping New Zealand brides for the last, what, two generations. So this is making it the third generation of people actually having some connection to Vinca. So tell me, what is your involvement with Vinca Design? Well, having grown up with with Vinca, being a designer, my mother being a designer, you know, I couldn't help but sort of entertain myself in the workroom. I learnt watching her, and then of course, as soon as I could, I was actually trying to get involved in and, um, and of course she had me doing the lowest of all jobs and of course I'm still doing the lowest of all jobs. I'm still making bales and still doing the, the cleaning and bits and pieces but you know the reality is there's a real passion for what we do and, and you know it just I have to keep going you know it's just something we love doing. You make the most amazing gowns. Thank you. And, and there's definitely a style that's, that's kind of a, your signature style. I think it's, I think it's our fit. I think we're really well known for our fit, and the, and actually they're comfortable, but the gowns actually flatter. Mm -hmm. They don't actually, you know, ride up and down with wear and <laughs> move around. And yeah, it's just, yeah, we're really into enhancing the, the female form. That's our little happy place. Yeah, I, I think it shows as well. I mean, just looking at the gowns that are on these mannequins now, you can just see that they, they fit the, the form very beautifully. I know, but you know, like if you've got a good little butt, you want to show that off. Absolutely. You know, you want to... <laughs> <laughs> you want everyone to say, you know what, I have I have got a lovely figure. You don't want to look like it's all, like you're trying too hard, but you do want to show that you've got this beautiful figure. And even if you don't, you want a gown that's going to enhance you and make you look better and better than you've ever looked. You know, so, you know, and if you've got a, a beautiful back and it's just about giving something that you look back at those photos and go, oh, that was such a beautiful gown and I still love it. And, you know, that's that's how it should be. And it was me. You know, you're not trying to be something you're not. I, I totally agree. Now, let's talk about the design process. What is your design process when somebody first come, well, walks through the door in well, Queen Street? Well, often people come in with no idea, or actually, or they've got so many ideas that they're just a little bit overwhelmed. I don't know, what do I do? And, and basically looking through the, the range, it's quite an extensive range we've got of all individual one-off gowns. So that sort of leads them in a direction where the lights come on, they can see, actually, that looks really, really good. And then they might go, but you know what, I don't like that sort of fabric, or I don't, you know, I'm not into sparkles, or I really wanted something, I don't know, whatever colour or whatever. And, um, and, and so that's my job is to interpret all that and, and then create it. I'm not trying to sell this dress. I mean, it'll sell itself. But if, if the right girl, if it doesn't flatter in the way it should do, then we need to go back to the drawing board and go, you know what, if we did this and cut that a little bit different here, then that would look incredible and suit you better. It's actually made by us, and I have the most amazing team working with me who have we've been together forever um, under Vinca um, before she got sick and couldn't um, sort of be in the business anymore. I think it's a really important point that you just made though is that the person that comes to you and deals with you, you are making their dress. Yeah, it's not lost it's, in no, that translation. So hopefully, um, you know, I'm sort of, and if it's a guy idea and I just think that's gonna look insane, are you serious? And if I don't actually believe it's gonna flatter hers, I just think I'm the wrong designer and I'll say so. I think, you know what, I'm probably better to find somebody else to do that rather than, or I'll, I'll try and gently persuade her to do something I think that perhaps be a bit more flattering. 
because if they don't have that look in the end result, then they're going to look at me and go, well, why did you say? So why do we want that? We want, it's our label on the back of them. So we want that to be the most incredible gown she's ever worn. I think that honesty policy is a very, very good one well, to have. If we can't have a working relationship of honesty, then it's not going to work. Just think, where was her family? Where, who was the person who sold that dress to her? How could they do that to her? Absolutely. I mean, even if it was an imported gown, who altered it and said, we can do this for you? You know, they, they must look at a dress and go, you know what, this isn't going to look like it should look. You really need to start again. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's the sad thing is, is I don't think there's enough honesty out there. People are just like, you know what, I can make some money out of this and just let it go. Yeah. And it's when those photos come back or when they, you know, when they see the end result and they go, oh my gosh, why didn't somebody say? And they're sort of squeezed into a dress or it's hanging off them or the, it's just so gapy around the bus that it looks like you could put the dinner plate with all the food um, down there and it's still wriggling around and you just think that's not how it should look. Now, let's talk about the, the imported versus bespoke, because you do bespoke, that's what Correct. you do. Yeah. We, and, we, and you we, do it exceedingly look, well. It's so tempting to get into the imported gowns because they are, there's a definite price advantage, mm -hmm. huge price advantage, but it's not the same thing. No. And it's okay, it, it, it has to be for some people, that's their budget and that's all they can afford. Then, you know, I wish them well, but for those who are prepared to spend a little bit more money on them, on the end result, um, then, you know, that's that's where we are. But then, to be fair, some of them, they come <laughs> at, at a certain price. Um, they come in a little box. They spend how much getting it steamed, if those creases will actually come out, and then the altering, and then is it going to look right, and so, and the fittings, and so all that they're paying extra. And so sometimes they're saying, you know what, I, I spent all this money and it's still... It's still not the dream, dream it's of my, not, it's not yeah, my, dress gown, my dreams. Yeah. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about some of these beautiful, beautiful gowns that you have in here. The fabrics that you have? The fabrics come from all over. You know, some of these fabrics I've got, a, yeah, I mean, on the top end, $1,500 a metre. Wow. But I mean, it looks incredible and you don't need much. But if that's your happy place, the next girl will go, that's, that's whoa, way too much. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they just want something simple and we can show them a lace for $100, you know, so it doesn't matter. It's what makes that gown and what makes that bride her gown. So the kind of dress that we've got here, yes. what would you describe this as? Well, it's a sort of a long line fitted bodice mm -hmm. um, with a bit of a cheeky, you know, sort of an uplift on the bottom there. And then you've got this sort of full crazy skirt going on, which is adding a bit of drama. Mm -hmm. But then one girl will turn up and say, oh, I love that, but I don't like the skirt. It's too full and fluffy for me. I like soft and drapey and that's cool we yeah. just swapped that out so and like i've done an I illusion sort of back, back. back is simply we're looking beautiful. at that lace it's stunning but then another person will say you yeah, know nah. <laughs> i want to i want something else or they've got a big scar or a tattoo or something and they go look i'm not sure and this one here that this one is that's an incredible lace and i just love the floral and the soft and then i've put a blush silk underneath that just to give it a just a bit of warmth uh, interestingly, when you see gowns in daylight, they actually get bleached right out. They yes. they all look white, even this will sort of photograph in a really light shade. But the fall of this lace and the, the drape of it, I just think is the most amazing effect. And I just like what's that little detail in there. A little bit of Swarovski just yeah, to throw it in. Beautiful. I mean, clearly she likes bling if she likes this dress. Absolutely. So, a little bit more drama. I've given a like a little bit of a I like choker. that little yeah, the little collar's nice. It's a very simple line. The the lace is busy, so you don't need to do much. But no. she might just one bride will might say, Look, I want um, I don't want strapless, I want shoulders, mm -hmm. easy. Um, or they just want a chiffon skirt and just forget all that. You know, so that's this it doesn't really matter. Or they might just want a big full you know, it just again it comes down to giving inspiration to brides mm -hmm. and then that's, you know, we, we sort of toss ideas around until we get to the right conclusion. I've seen girls come in with, a, with their own dress to choose accessories because I've got the most a beautiful range of accessories and, um, and again, different jewellers, you know, and they're not, some of them are imported, they're very inexpensive and I've got some more little small and intricate handmade pieces with Swarovski and rhodium plated and, you know, different platings on it to give different effects. Um, and um, and flowers and all sorts of little and fascinators, all sorts of bits and pieces. And so they come and choose to finish their dress. And you see some of these gowns 
and you know it's fantastic for me because we're like oh wow that's terrible <laughs> but I mean you're not saying it to her but she needs to make it look better yeah. and you can see in her little face she's like oh it's not as she wanted it but she has to make do so the accessories are helping with that. Now bespoke obviously they, they come at a cost so well, what sort of what sort of range are we looking at? Realistically for bespoke you're looking at late threes to you know in the fives really mm -hmm. uh, but most girls spending between four and five as an average um, but it really comes down to the fabrics like this fabric is not cheap so if you've got so much of it there well of course it's going to be a little bit more but you surely have then seen the value of it Absolutely. but if they say look I don't have that sort of budget what can we do well if we eliminated this change that blah 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 so this is how we can sort of dumb it down a little bit to get that effect but the, no matter what you do is like the laces there's huge difference this could be 800 bucks in a, in a, in a meter of fabric so okay well this is a good alternative what do you think um, so that's a really w a good way of doing it and often I'll give a bride a beaded version and an unbeaded version great and so the same design which how incredible is that mm -hmm. and so though and so she can think about it do I value that or not mm -hmm. does, does it matter to me or not or they may want a little bit of beading on this part but then this plane so this is where we really try and work so the gown is exactly what the bride needs financially as well. Fantastic. But she's not paying for all these extras on top of it to make it look better. You know, <laughs> it's actually the cost of the gown and it's not like a, it's a big surprise to try and try and tighten it up with all these other things to make it pretty. So you're making it work on both ends? It's sometimes said by someone who's, who's quite flippant about it and go wedding dress, you know, it's, She's only going to wear it for half a day. What's the point? You know, why spend the money? And it's like, well, she'll never, ever forget how she felt on that day. It's the most significant day she'll ever have in her life. I don't care what. She's, she is, it's so important. They, these girls have put so much energy into planning this wedding, as you would know, and so much love and so much thought. Um, so it's like her little armor plating, really. You know, it's, it's, if she's looking good, she knows she looks good. She doesn't have to be thinking about a dress. She's just out there having a great day and planning, you know, enjoying every moment, but and without, you know, fidgeting and rearranging it and trying to tweak it all the time and fidget with it. I mean, that's terrible. Um, but these girls will never look at those photos and think, God, what was I thinking? You know, you're, <laughs> you're there. And, you know, 20 years later, 50 years later, these mums and nanas are coming in going, oh, I love my dress, or it was the most beautiful fabric in the, you know, and they can relive it like a birthing story. Yeah. And, and, the, and or there's this, this story of, oh, my dress, it was terrible, or, oh, my mother made the dress, or my auntie made the dress, or something. And there was a, a drama attached to oh, it. Oh, and I was, oh, it was what my mother wanted, I didn't like it, and then I had to wear this jolly thing, and, you know, the, and it's, it's, it's quite polarised. They're mm -hmm. either loving their gown, and they've got this amazing story, or they've got this really sad one and you never forget it, so it isn't, it's money well spent. Anita, what's the best way for brides to come and find you? Would it be on the website? Do they come and pop in and see you? Uh, either way would be fantastic, but the website is um, uh, vinkadesign.co.nz or they can phone us. We love a conversation, that's great. Anita, thank you so much for coming in and chatting to me today. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here. Thank you, thank you so much. I've been talking to Anita from Vinka Design.